episode of Curator on the Loose. Today we're going out of this world, pun intended, to talk about this guy, the lunar roving vehicle. In 1969, NASA decided they needed a way for their astronauts to get a little bit further away from the lander, to do more experiments and see more of the moon. And they knew they needed hmm, basically an electric buggy. And they came up with this. And they went to Boeing and they said, we need you guys to design this thing. And Boeing went, yeah, great, we will. And in 17 months, we had a working model. That is crazy. Now, they built four of them for Apollo 15, 16, 17, and 18. Unfortunately, we know that Apollo 18 never launched. So that one was used for parts. But the other three were used and still are on the face of the moon. That is really cool. There are also some other cool things about this that we're gonna talk about right now. One of the things you wanna do when you're going into space is you wanna keep things light. Now, this guy, even though it's 10 feet long, only weighed 462 pounds, and it folded up into three pieces. That way it could be hung in the lunar descent module. And when you got to the surface of the moon, you opened up a compartment, you rolled this thing out on a rack, and then you just kind of winched it down, pulled eight pins, and you're ready to go. It was immediately drivable. And speaking of driving, it had one motor for each tire. Think of it kind of like a 1969 Tesla on the moon. How cool is that? Now, one of the kind of did you know moments about this is that you'll see through the magic of B-roll, it's actually got seat belts because you don't want, you know, astronauts flying off of this thing and then kind of floating around and coming back to the moon's surface 10 minutes later. The astronauts hated the seat belts because Nobody's perfect. NASA engineers had developed the seat belts for when we were on Earth, not on the moon. So they were actually a little bit too short. Well, guess what? They just forgot that up there, they don't have as much gravity pushing the astronaut into the seat. And so the astronauts really had to force those stupid seat belts on. But when you think about it, Probably a good thing, because you don't really want to fall out of this guy when you're zipping along at what? A whopping eight miles an hour. Yep, that's what this top speed was, eight miles an hour. But guess what? It could go faster than that. Gene Cernan on Apollo 17 drove this thing at a whopping 11.2 miles per hour, baby. In fact, he holds the record for fastest human on the face of the moon as well as being the last human on the face of the moon. That's kind of cool for him. One of the really distinctive features of the LRV are these tires. NASA needed something really lightweight, but also able to work in the really thick moon dust that was up there on the surface of the planet. And so they came up with these. It's a spun aluminum core or hub within this mesh wire around it. And then on top of that, are these little plates of titanium that give it some kind of traction. But one of the really cool things is if you'll look on the inside, there's a bump stop of just this metal mesh. And what that does is it keeps the tire from compressing. Because when you think about it, there are no roads up on the moon. So these guys were like four wheeling around and they don't want to bottom out. You know, now that I look at it, this thing was kind of like an awesome little four-wheel drive buggy. It had 14 inches of ground clearance. Woohoo! Another really distinctive feature about the LRV, it doesn't have a steering wheel. So how do you move it around? Well, check out the stick up there. It's right between where the two astronauts sat. And you gripped it with either your right or your left hand, depending upon where you were seated. And it, a simple push forward, you go forward. Tilt it right, you go right. Tilt it left, you go left. You pull it back, it's got a brake. What if you need to go in reverse? Easy, you flip a switch and you pull it backwards. 
No big deal. It was really easy to drive around. And you know what? The astronauts loved it. In fact, they came back and went down to Boeing and said, thank you so much for this thing. It is really cool. And through the magic of B-roll again, you're going to get to see something that has traveled in space. One of what they call the pip pins. And it's one of the little pins you just pulled out to unfold the thing. The astronauts brought Boeing back one to say thank you because this thing worked so well. You know what? Here's a little bit of insider knowledge that you may not know. Last year, the city of Kent, Washington actually declared the three moon buggies still up on the moon as King County historic landmarks. So the next time you're on the moon, don't go messing around with the moon buggies because we'll know about it. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a really fun episode. I'm not really a space guy, but this guy, so cool. I really want one. Might be driving this thing around if you guys uh, tune in later. Anyway, thank you again so much. We're going to do another episode here for next week, so make sure you tune in. And again, if you guys can shoot any money our way, we would greatly appreciate it. We survive on your donations at this point because obviously nobody's coming in the door because nobody's going anywhere. So whatever you can kick our way is awesome. And if you don't want to just outright donate, go spend some money in our store. 